Well, welcome everybody. It is good to be together for our grief lecture series. We are live at First Memorial Garden of Memories Funeral Services in Victoria, BC. And uh, very pleased to be back. Um, we've uh, taken a little bit of a, a break from these lecture series, but decided that we need to uh, get back at her. And I think it's really important for us because we are going through a lot of grief and loss during this time. The pandemic has uh, brought some things to our lives that we need to discuss and think about and reflect upon. And so I've designed four lectures in the next four months to deal specifically with loss uh, coming out of the pandemic. Now, we're not out of the pandemic yet, but we still need to deal with what's happening within our lives. So it is great to be together. Again, my name is Rick Berg, for those of you who don't know me. And I'm the bereavement educator and in-house counselor for First Memorial. And so it is good that we can provide this, and we hope that you'll be able to pass on this information. It'll be on our Facebook uh, uh, page and also a YouTube channel, and you can access that and share that with uh, friends and family and neighbors who might find this helpful. Tonight's topic is post-pandemic grief. Why catching up with loss is important. Let's face it, there's been a lot of loss, both big and small, during the last 18 months. And whenever there's loss, there's grief. Grief follows loss. And it's not over with yet. We know that. You know, it's interesting because it was late spring when I designed this lecture series, thinking that perhaps we might be on the other side of the pandemic, but that is not the truth. We're still in the very midst of it. And so we need to, again, come to grips with loss during the pandemic, uh, understand that it's going to happen, and then reflect upon what might be helpful to help us along the way. It hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy during COVID for all of us. As I've said, there's all kinds of losses that have occurred during this uh, time of COVID. And all kinds of statistics that are beginning to be revealed already about some of the impact of loss in our society, in people's lives, in marriages, with friends, with family. And I'm sure that there's going to be a lot more. There's going to be a lot of research coming out of this pandemic that's going to reveal some deep things about loss and grief. Yeah, it's been tough. There's been some consequences already, a result of loss coming in the pandemic. Domestic abuse has skyrocketed. Mental health issues have escalated. Depression, anxiety, especially amongst the younger generation. Alcohol-related fatalities have increased, especially those over the age of 65. Overdose. Yeah, some very difficult things have occurred as a result of loss experienced in the pandemic. One interesting statistic is divorce rates. How they've climbed substantially around the world during this time of COVID. There's a lot of loss and there's a lot of grief that's happening within our lives. Perhaps you've been one of those individuals who have experienced loss. Actually, you have. You have experienced loss. Many people have experienced a job loss, for example. Others of you, perhaps financial loss. Maybe others of you have struggled with your health during the pandemic. I know that I've heard many examples of people who, you know, are struggling with their health and haven't been able to get to the hospitals uh, because they've been filled with other more priority cases, that is COVID. It's been difficult. And of course, the loss of just not being together, that's been tough. That's been hard. Well, loss isn't going away right now. And grief is hanging out with us. Mm -hmm. Grief is hanging out with us. And I believe it doesn't know where it should go. 
are where it should be placed in our memory, in our lives. Because it was supposed to be different. But it isn't. Grief is confused. It really is. Because grief is missing. Grief is missing out on something in your life. Missing out on what has happened or what you had hoped for. Grief doesn't know what to do. I think it's really quite confused. The grief that you experience is a result of COVID. It's been our culprit. Why? Because it's taken away what is important to you and what you've missed out on. You know, the significant facts and moments and experiences of our life are strung together to create our narrative and our identity. What makes us who we are are the events in our life, the experiences that we enjoy together that create meaning, that create joy, and give us a sense of who we are in our lives. This is important because memories that are part of our lives are what we bring forward in our lives to remind us where we've come from, where we're going, where we want to be. And some of the memories that we have during COVID are difficult because they're filled with loss. Do you want to keep that memory? Do you want that as part of your life? You haven't had a choice. COVID has come about not because of us. It's part of our lives. And it's created a lot of loss. And I want to talk about this loss a little bit and then give you some hope, give you some strategies that will help you come out of this. Or at least to handle the grief and loss as we come out of this pandemic, hopefully sooner than later. Let me explain this a little bit more. When I talk to people in my counseling practice, one of the most difficult areas of loss, actually for people, is divorce. I've not experienced it myself, but when I, when I speak with couples and when I speak with those who have separated, who have gone on to a different life, they say it's difficult because in a divorce, the other person is still there. They're not gone. And you still have to face them sometimes, perhaps if you have children, or gatherings, you're getting together. And often I hear people saying it's difficult to move forward in life sometimes because it's always in your face. It's a reminder of what you've lost. And it's difficult because there's grief attached to that. And I think COVID very much has done that to us as well. It keeps hanging around. It, it's, it's, it's in our face all the time. And these stories that we, we have moved through in our life are not completed yet because they include loss, and we didn't want them to include loss, and yet it's still hanging out with us. I, I don't want to take this lightly. I want to look at loss as reality in our lives tonight. And not to just say, well, it's happened, it's over with, it's done, let's go on in our life. It's not that easy. All of the events in our life, all the memories that are part of who and what we are, we need to participate in, we need to engage, we need to create, we need to make happen. And when they haven't happened the way that we want them to, it creates loss, which is grief. So many experiences this year of people. I remember talking to a couple who were so excited about celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. That's a big milestone. They wanted to invite family and friends and, and a bridesmaid that was still alive and a flower girl from another province. They wanted to do it up big and the family had all these plans. 
The 50th anniversary only happens once. Well, it resulted in just a couple family members in a small bubble celebrating mom and dad's 50th anniversary. It wasn't quite what they had planned for. And when you think about that, you say, well, they've done something, which is good. But there's also a loss component in that because of what they hoped it would be. A little bit more than that. Or consider this, the 100th birthday of a mom. Now, that doesn't happen that often. And the individual had been planning, that is the daughter, this amazing birthday party for her mom, who was going to turn 100 years of age. They had it all set to go. It was going to be a big party with music and cake and dancing and music and all kinds of festivities with lots of people in honor of her mom. Well, that 100th, 100th birthday, here's the picture of it. Daughter, son-in-law, on the street, looking up at a long-term care facility with mom waving out the window with a FaceTime call singing happy birthday. Now you can say again, they did something. But what they didn't do was a loss. They were missing out on something that was creating this beautiful memory, but it didn't happen the way they had planned. I consider that graduate last year who had so much looked forward to being on stage with all the friends and throwing the hat. She said to me, it was okay, but all who were there in that auditorium that was allowed were five people, including my parents, and me walking across the stage receiving my diploma wasn't quite the same. They did what they could, but there was still loss. And so for me, it's been fascinating to talk to individuals who are trying to grapple with celebrating life as best they can, but still experiencing this loss in the midst of it and wondering what to do with it. And that's why I said earlier that grief is hanging out and it's confused as well. Because usually when you go through a loss, you move through it onto something different. But in this case, it's still hanging out because people are still experiencing it because they wanted something different. And when I began to examine that, I began to think about how we actually create life and how we create memories around these special events of our lives that make us who and what we are, that we hold dear to us. And really, uh, I came up with three kind of different uh, principles. When you want to create life, when you want, you know, when you want to create a, a memory that sticks, a memory that, that is part of who and what you are that's remembered forever, usually what you do is you get together. <laughs> and you get together as a community with family and friends, and that was missing. We were limited always by the bubble. Oh, yes, we did the Zoom stuff. And we did the FaceTime. But there's nothing like being together. And usually when we create memories, we, we have a, some type of ritual. There's some type of ritual around it. You know, when you get married, you gather together. You, you have the vows. You know, you, you cut the cake. You know, you have a procession. You have a receiving line. You have speeches. You have all these things that, that create this wonderful memory, meaningful, that allow us to integrate that into our memory bank that's, that we hold dear forever. And all of a sudden, that's gone. It wasn't quite what we had hoped for. Usually, these memories that we hold dear to us that are part of our lives also include some type of rite of passage. You know, it's fascinating because... 
You know, a graduation, for example, is a rite of passage. It's on to something different. And I know talking to this graduate, it was difficult because they felt that something was missing in their life. The ritual wasn't there. What they had hoped for, what they had planned for, was a little bit missing. It's almost like they wanted to do it again. These things are so important to think about. Think about how loss has has captured part of our life and what to do about it, how to move forward in a meaningful way. Well, what helps? What helps? I think there's some really important things here that we can think about. I think the number one thing is to recognize that even in the midst of the celebrating that we did, there was some missing that occurred. And I think all of us here and online, if you began to make a list of your lost experiences, whatever they were, it would be a long list. Big or small. Think of those now. You know, do you miss out on a wedding that you're supposed to go to? Were you not able to participate in that funeral of an uncle or an aunt or a parent? The graduation I mentioned earlier. How about the birth of a grandchild? Did COVID prevent you from being there, welcoming that new little one into the world? How about that job promotion you had hoped for, but it was put on hold? A holiday trip that you had planned for, for years, that was all of a sudden taken away from you? A friend that you would hoped to connect with and had it all worked out? And all of a sudden, it no longer happened. And how about those things, those normal things of life that, that bring you meaning and purpose and, and are part of who and what you are that you couldn't do? Playing sports or singing in a choir, going to the theater, worshiping in church. You and I missed out on a lot. And when we miss out, we experience loss. And loss results in grief. Loss results in grief. And we need to just take some time to say, it happened in my life. And even though I maybe celebrated the best I could, there were still some missing pieces that have left me a little bit empty. I actually get tired of the phrase, we did the best we could. And that's the way it is. And we have to go on in our life. Because we don't then recognize what we missed out on that was important to us. I remember talking to a family just recently who had been waiting and waiting to be able to catch a plane over to Europe, to Hong Kong, to attend their son and daughter-in-law's wedding. They kept on waiting, and the wedding was delayed and delayed and delayed. And finally, they decided to stream it on Zoom. Now they said it was good, but it wasn't the best. There was something missing in that experience that was hard for them. I know myself, I missed out on my grandchildren this year. I mean, one that was only six months old. and a year of life of not being able to hold him, touch him, or 
be to him, tickle him, be next to him. I'm sure that some of you have gone through the same thing. So recognize, first of all, that this is part of our lives. But here's the exciting part for me. We can create new memories out of the old ones. And neuroscience is such a fascinating topic. Here's the thing we know. Making memories literally changes our brain. And every memory that you have as a result of a lasting physical alteration in your brain in response to what you've experienced. So you've experienced something already. But if you want to change that memory, you need to add to it to make it different. Isn't that cool? You can change an existing memory to make it different. So all those events in your life that were a combination of the best that we could do and a loss that's part of it can actually be changed to be better. Well, how does a memory occur? Well, we know that first is sensory and factual elements of what you experience through the pores of your sense. So what you see, hear, smell, taste, and feel. That's how memories are created. All through those senses. Now, this is what's fascinating. Most of our memories this year have been created through two. What we see and what we've heard. That's why we talk about Zoom so often. It was a way for us to see each other even though we weren't in person or FaceTime, or whatever platform you used. And we could hear because, well, we can phone and we can talk. But that's it. That's all we had. And memories that are strong and lasting and powerful are based upon all the senses working together because each sense works at different parts of the brain. They create neural activity, creating neural circuits that create memories. Let me give you an example here. And I'm sure that all of you may have experienced that this year, perhaps. I want to take you to Christmas or holiday season. And I want to take you to a memory of mine that's vivid. And it's a memory that is at least... 55 years old. Between 50 and 55 years old. And I can picture it right now. And the memory took place in my grandma's home. And it took place around the kitchen table. And it was Christmas. And I can see my uncles and my aunts. And I can see the turkey and I can smell it, and I can see my I can see the individuals. I can see the the plates, what color they were. I can hear the laughter. I can smell the lutefisk, which is a Norwegian delicacy that nobody wants to eat. I can hear the voices begin to sing the table grace. I can see us touch hands around the table. And then I can see us getting up from the table. And I can see us getting up from the table and opening up the presents with Grandma giving each one of us. And that year I got a uh, football game, electric football game. I'll never forget it. And I can remember Grandma saying, okay, now it's time for the program. And we all always had to sing or dance or say a poem or do a reading. Everybody had to be part of the program. 
And I remember hugging people as we would leave. That memory is like a lasting memory because it's based upon those five senses that create this circuitry that bring it together that can't be forgotten. That can't be forgotten. Now ask me about my Christmas last year. I was at home with my wife, Erica, which is a good thing. I think we had a turkey, but I can't remember. I know we phoned the kids on Zoom, but that's about it. That's about it. That, that's COVID. <laughs> that's loss. That's grief. That's not allowing the, ex- the experience of our life to take hold and form who and what we are and shape the memories we have in our life. And if you think about that, that's what's happened during COVID to many of our experiences. It's left us dangling for more, wanting more. It's so fascinating to think about the brain and what it can do to us. This neural activity, these neurons that are fired up, that are triggered. You know, we talked a lot about in previously about you know, how grief sometimes comes back into our lives. You know, we call them grief bursts. And I always talked about those five senses. You know, why is it that a song that is sung brings back a memory? Or a smell of certain food or or some item brings back a memory of that person. That's because it's embedded into our brain, and it, and it triggers those neurons, and it gets things fired up again. The powerful thing here, my friends, is that we can create new memories. We can attach. We can add to the memories that all have been created to make them what we want them to be if we so choose to, what we see, hear, touch, smell, and taste, we can retrieve our memory. We can trigger activation of it. We can make things new. I love that. So why is this important? Well, I entitled this Catching Up With Loss. How do you catch up with loss? I think you change it. You change the experience to make it different. So it become a new narrative, a new part of our story, something that's different than it once was. Let's just think about that for a moment, making things different than what it was. An example might be a funeral, a celebration of life. I've had many people said, well, you know, we didn't have a funeral or celebration of life for dad. And it's kind of over with now. We moved on in our life. And I said, has it? Or have you? Why not? Do it later. Why not do it sometime? Can't you catch up with loss and make it different to create a new memory? Can't you add to it? Yes, you can. And you do that through ritual, bringing people back together again through a rite of passage of moving forward, through creating community, and allowing those senses to bring that memory to solid, to make it solid, to make it different, to change it. You know, this week I received some photographs from a couple that got married. They'd asked me last year if I would marry them, if I would preside over their marriage. And the wedding was to take place on June the 25th. 
But because of COVID restrictions, it couldn't take place. All the guests that he invited, many from down east in the States, could not attend. And they said, well, finally, let's get married. And so they got married. And they sent me pictures of their marriage on top of a mountain in Banff somewhere. Beautiful pictures. And then in the bottom of the note, it said, save the date. June 25th, 2022. You see what they're doing? It's beautiful. They were experiencing loss. They wanted their family there, their grandparents there, the, 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 the friends to be part of that celebration, and they weren't. But next year, June the 25th, they're adding to their marriage memory. They're adding to it. They're changing it. And I'll bet anything that they're going to remember that June 25th, 2022, even more than the first time around because they're bringing community together. They're making it different. And I think we need to think about that. Those things that are meaningful in our lives, those things that we want to be part of our ongoing story, that we perhaps missed out on? Why not go back and make them different? You know, my wife, Erica, and myself were celebrating our 10th wedding anniversary during COVID, and we had booked a trip to Maui because that's where we first met. And we were so much looking forward to being together there again. And COVID came. And we had to cancel the trip. I think we went out to a restaurant. Was it good? Yeah, of course it was good. But we were feeling a sense of loss because of what we had planned for. Well, we're going to do it. I've been looking for flights. I've been waiting for COVID to finish. I've been looking around. And we're going to do that again because I want our anniversary to be different, to celebrate it in a different way. Whatever is meaningful in your life that has happened during COVID that includes loss, you can change it by what you do next. Don't settle. Don't settle for the way it was when you can really do something about it, you can catch up with your grief and loss. You can create a new memory, a new experience that brings joy and happiness and allows you to move through, to move through the grief and loss into the next chapter of your life. I want to thank you for listening to us tonight. And I want to remind you that once a month we're going to be sharing these lectures. Our next lecture is Thursday, October 14th, Resilience and Grief. What the pandemic has helped us to become, or how, it has helped us to become resilient people. And we have another series happening as well. It's a noon hour series that's going to begin in October 28. If you'd like to have more information about any of our lectures, you can give First Memorial a phone call at 250-658-5244 and they can get you some information and get you hooked up with some of the dates that you might come and attend. Again, you're welcome to attend here live. Uh, we do uh, ask that you wear a mask, but also this will be live streamed uh, to you as well. So thank you again for being here today or tonight and take good care. Bye-bye for now.